Hi, this is Cindy calling from the Bay Area. In one of your recent podcasts, you were talking about the benefits of an LLC. And you happened to mention that you have an LLC for your real estate investments. And if I recall, all of your real estate investments are via passive real estate. So my question to you is, is an LLC necessary if you're doing significant real estate investments via passive methods such as the funds that you sometimes advertise on your website? I was thinking the LLC might have been more important if you're direct ownership, but it sounds like you also do it for passive real estate. Can you speak on this? Okay, great question. Um, here's the deal. Uh, any sort of real estate property is a toxic asset, meaning it can introduce liability into your life. Your car is a toxic asset. Your boat's a toxic asset. Your airplane's a toxic asset. Your dog is a toxic asset, right? So as many of those toxic assets as you can, it's great to kind of shield yourself from liability with those assets. Um, that's called um, uh, internal liability. It's liability that results from the asset. You know, somebody slips and falls on your property. That introduces some liability to you. And it's good to insure against that, right? Both with property-specific insurance as well as an umbrella policy that overlies that asset. Um, so that can be done with a corporation. Corporations, for other reasons, don't work very well for real estate. A much better option is a limited liability company or LLC. So I think most real estate should be held by an entity known as an LLC. Um, and so that's a good idea. Now, uh, there are other options. Limited partnerships uh, can also provide that protection, at least for the limited partners. Um, and you will see if you look at these private real estate investments, these syndications, these funds, they're all set up as limited partnerships or limited liability companies. So you don't need another limited liability company to then own your share of that limited liability company. One of them is enough. And a limited liability company works uh, both for internal and external liability. Okay, For internal liability, what it does is it limits your liability to what's in the LLC. Right, Somebody slips and falls on the property, you don't own the property, they can't sue you for slipping and falling. They can only sue the LLC. And what can they get? Well, they can get everything the LLC contains, which may be the value of that property, its bank accounts. If you have another property in there, they could get the value of that property, uh, but that's pretty much what they're limited to. So it insulates your other assets. You're not gonna lose your home. You're not gonna lose your brokerage account. You're not gonna lose your car to somebody slipping and falling at your property. It also, and this varies by state, uh, can protect from external liability. So let's say uh, the rare chance you get an above policy limits judgment that isn't reduced on appeal from medical malpractice, right? In many states, you will be limited to a charging order against that LLC. And what a charging order is, is it basically says when you distribute funds from the LLC, they have to go to your creditor, uh, not to you. Uh, but the nice thing about that is if that's all they're limited to, if they can't force you to pull assets out of that LLC or can't force the LLC to liquidate the asset, then you don't have to distribute anything from the LLC. You can say, okay, great. You're just going to get the tax bill for what the LLC makes. We're not actually going to make a distribution. So not only are you not going to get any money, you're going to get a tax bill. And so that uh, encourages people to settle rather than go after you and your assets in the LLC. So it provides some external liability protection as well. Now you will see some people that are really into asset protection or are really into, you know, complicated schemes and trying to make themselves anonymous. They will set up an additional LLC, often in Wyoming. So a Wyoming LLC then owns the LLCs in your state, one for each property. And the idea is that they can't find out who owns the property. Well, the truth is in a lawsuit, uh, there's a process called discovery in which they put you on the stand and ask, what do you own? And unless you want to go to jail, you'd better tell them the truth, 
right? This is a civil matter, but you start lying in court and it becomes a criminal matter and you get to go to jail. Uh, and so I, I don't think that's worth as much as a lot of these expensive asset protection firms uh, would have you believe. But if you really want the utmost in protection, you can set up yet another LLC that holds the ownership of your LLCs. Uh, and you can do it in a state like Wyoming for that additional protection. Uh, but I don't do that. I certainly don't have an LLC that owns uh, my shares in the LLCs and LPs of the private uh, real estate syndications and, and funds that I have. I think that's overkill. So I don't do that. If you want your questions answered by the White Coat Investor, record your question at whitecoatinvestor.com slash YQA or click the link in the description. The hosts of the White Coat Investor podcast are not licensed accountants, attorneys, or financial advisors. This podcast is free entertainment and information only. It should not be considered professional or personalized financial advice. You should consult the appropriate professional for specific advice relating to your situation.